this problem, we have a hypothesis test comparing two proportions, it seems, and a study of treatments of very painful cluster headaches. We have 140 patients, and they were treated with oxygen, and 144 other patients were given a placebo. So we've got two groups. We've got the group that was given the oxygen, oxygen, and then we've got the placebo group. So placebo and oxygen. All right, among the 140 patients in the oxygen group, 122 were free from headaches 15 minutes after treatment. So whenever you have two proportions, um, you have to find n, which is your observations. So in this case, that's going to be the 140. We have 140 total people. And successes is the 122. So success in this problem is being free from headaches. Among the 144 patients given the placebo, that's going to be n sub 2, so 144. 39 were free from headaches, so it looks like a lot less, so x sub 2 equals 39. So it looks like the oxygen maybe is working, right? Maybe. Use a 0.05 significance level, that's going to be our alpha. So 0 0.05, to test the claim that the oxygen, oxygen treatment is effective. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our null and alternate hypotheses. So the first step is to set up the null which is h sub 0, and then h sub 1, which is the alternative. So this is two proportions. So p1 is the population proportion of people who took the oxygen treatment. p2 is the population proportion of people who took the placebo. So the null hypothesis in these problems is always that p1 is equal to p2. Always, every single time, it's always this. We want to see if the oxygen treatment is effective. So we want... Um, P1 to be bigger than P2 because P1 is the proportion of people who are free from headaches who took oxygen. We want that to be bigger than the proportion who are free from headaches that took the placebo, right? If the oxygen treatment is effective, then more people are free from headaches who take oxygen. So this should be greater than, right? That's how we get the greater than. Let's check it. So it should be E. Fantastic. All right, now we want the test statistic. So for us, that's step two. And then step three is the p-value. All right, so what we do is we can click on question help, and then we go to stat crunch. I'm gonna click this to make it a little bit easier to see. All right, good stuff. So we go to stat, and then proportion stats. And here we have two samples. So we, we click two sample, and then it's with summary. So stat, proportion, to sample, with summary. Let me do that again. So it's stat, proportion stats, to sample, with summary. Okay, when you get here, you just have to enter all of the information. So number of successes, that's going to be your x1, so 122. Number of observations, that's your n1, so 140. Number of successes here is only 39 for the placebo group, and 144 uh, total for the placebo group. Here you see a zero, and the reason that's there is just by construction. It's just the way StatCrunch is created. So basically, it's the same thing that we have, right? Because if you have if you have p1 equals p2, and you subtract p2 from both sides, they cancel, and you get p1 minus p2 equals zero. So it's exactly the same thing that we have. So um, you just leave it at zero, and then just change this to greater than. I always do a quick check to make sure everything's correct. It's really easy to mess up in these problems. You type in one number wrong, and then the whole thing is wrong. So 122, 140, 39, 144. Everything looks OK. All right, good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and click Compute. Yep, here we go. So we have our Z. Wow, that's a really big Z. So Z in this case. Um, well, let me see how many decimals it wants. Let's, let's check that. So it should tell us uh, two decimals for Z. So 10.21, that would be our test statistic. Now it says the p-value is less than 0 0.0001. So whenever it says that, just put zero. Just put zero. It's saying it's really, really small, less than 0 0.0001, so it's pretty much zero. I'm going to close this, and then we can answer the other questions. Let's see. So z equals 10.21. Yes. And the p-value, let's try zero. It says three decimals, but it should be zero. So let's try it. Good stuff. All right, so now step four, we have to decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in this step, you always compare your p-value to your alpha. So our p-value is zero. 
our alpha is 0 0.05. If the p-value is smaller than alpha, you reject h sub 0. If the p-value is bigger than alpha, you fail to reject. In this case, it's smaller, so we write reject h sub 0. Step 5 is our interpretation. Let's go ahead and do it. When we do step 5, we always start by mentioning the level of significance. So in this case, it's at the 5% because alpha is 0.05. Level of significance. Level of significance. And whenever you reject H sub 0, there is sufficient evidence to support H1. If you fail to reject, there is not sufficient evidence. So we rejected. So there is sufficient evidence to support H1. So I'll just say to claim. It's better if you say to support the claim, being a little bit bad here, but it's okay. To claim that. Well, that the proportion of people who um, are free from headaches who take oxygen is greater than the proportion of people who are free from headaches who take the placebo. So um, you can just say, you can just go to the last sentence here, that the oxygen treatment is effective. That the oxygen, same thing, treatment is effective. So I got that from the question. That was initially what we did. We read that question, we read, we read this oxygen treatment effective, and we came up with this. So um, to be shorter, you can just say oxygen treatment is effective. So let's see, the p-value is less than the significance level of alpha. So we reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the cure rate with oxygen treatment is higher than the cure rate for those given the placebo. We could have written that as well instead of just saying the oxygen treatment is effective. Let's try it. Yes. Ooh, there's another question. It wants a confidence interval. So it's telling us to construct a 90% confidence interval. So again, we'll go to question help. We go to stack crunch. I'm going to click this. All right, and it's the same place we were before, right? We go to stat, proportion stats, to sample with summary. All right, now we're going to enter everything. So our successes is 122, just like before. Observations is 140. Successes is 39, right? 39, yep, looks right. Observations is 144. All right, what was the confidence level? I think it was 90%. Yep, 90%. So you click on confidence interval and enter 90. And let me just see how many decimals it wants. It wants three decimals, okay. So let's just check this. So 122 is our successes, 140 is our observations. 39 is our successes, 144 is our observations. Always be really careful in these problems. They're so long and you make one little mistake and you gotta do it over. So let's check, go, go slow here. So looks like that's the answer there. That's the upper limit and the lower limit always. So I'm gonna write it down somewhere. I'm gonna write it down over here. It's a different color, it's green. Whoops, green, there we go, green. So it wants three decimals, so point five to four point six seven seven it's the lower and the upper right it's it's the lower limit and the upper limit always those are the limits of the they're called confidence interval limits confidence interval limits let's type it in 0.524 and then this is 0.677 well done because the confidence interval limits, okay, so the confidence interval limits do not contain zero. That means there is a difference between the proportions. If they contain zero, like if zero is between these numbers, then the proportions could be the same. So in particular, they, they don't contain zero in this case. So the proportions are, could, are different. And remember, when it's positive numbers only, that means your first proportion is bigger. So this confidence interval agrees with our results, right? We rejected the null hypothesis, and so we said that the proportion of people who get who are cured from oxygen is uh, who are free from headaches uh, who take oxygen is greater than those who are free from headaches who took the placebo. So the oxygen treatment is effective. So this agrees with our results. So because they do not include zero, it appears that the two cure rates are not equal because the confidence interval limits include only positive values, it appears that the cure rate is higher for the oxygen treatment than for the placebo, correct. 
So P1 is the cure rate for those who took oxygen. Because we only have positive numbers, the first thing is bigger. So the first proportion is bigger. That's the cure rate for those who took oxygen. That's higher than the cure rate for those who took placebo. So everything looks okay. Check answer. And that's it. So that was, oh, there's more. There's more. Based on the results, is the oxygen treatment effective? Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's see which one is the best choice for that. The results suggest that the oxygen treatment is effective in curing cluster headaches. Uh, it's going to be that one because all of these say not effective, right? And this says inconclusive, so it should be part A. And that's it. So a very, very long question. Sorry about the long video, but as you see, these problems take a lot of time. So when you're working through these, um, just go really, really slow uh, and, and just take your time. So I hope that made sense.